The past couple decades have been absolutely unprecedented when it comes to the implementation of technology in our day-to-day -day lives. Not since the Industrial Revolution have we seen such a huge shift towards the use of machines in work, education, and play. And now that it's almost a requirement to keep an internet-connected device on us at all times, it doesn't seem like we're going back. With this almost unlimited access to information, there are plenty of positives from being able to fact check at any given moment, to consulting others at the push of a button, to simply being able to access and curate certain databases. But there are plenty of drawbacks to our constant technological connection too. All of this comes together and begs the question, does technology affect our memories? Let's discuss. Since time immemorial, the human race has been defined by our ability to use technology. Of course, we haven't always had access to wireless networks and silicon microchips, but we have always found ways to get jobs done faster and more reliably through the use of tools. Whether it was inherent in our monkey brains or the result of a monolith touching down before us, we may never know. But the results of this craftiness and willingness to look for new solutions are very apparent. Technological advance has been the driving force behind pretty much every major historical era. Primitive humans who developed weapons could hunt more effectively and ward off predators, meaning they could survive longer. Societies who figured out irrigation could benefit from a more substantial and reliable source of food. Wars have been fought and won on the backs of new weapons and defenses, major settlements have flourished thanks to newly significant resources being discovered nearby. The average human lifespan has been increased thanks to the many different advances in technology. Now, a lot of these technologies managed to simplify the parts of people's lives that were often quite difficult. They offered up practical solutions to life's biggest problems. You're starving? Here's how to farm enough food for your entire family. Animals too hard to kill? Try this weapon. People are dying due to filth and poor hygiene. How about cleaning up a little and here, take some antiseptic too. Now, a lot of these problems are still around, but to a lesser degree than they once were. Thanks to technological advances, more folks can have their basic needs met. It's not a perfect system, especially when profit motives often come ahead of people's physical needs, but hey, maybe someday. However, with all of these basic needs met, other problems become more apparent and need solving. Boredom being a big one. When you don't have to constantly fend for your life in one way or another, it becomes pretty easy to let your mind wander. And we came up with a pretty ingenious solution. All sorts of different technology. The printing press got all sorts of new people reading regularly, eventually followed by the telegram, letting people communicate instantly from a distance. After that, in relatively rapid succession, we got the telephone, the radio, and optic fiber. Factor in the arrival of the motion picture and the eventual evolution to home television, and we become a much more content-reliant species. Every generation has their version of too much X will rot your brain. It happened with books, it happened with TV, and it happened with video games, and you bet it's happening with smart devices. But how much truth is there to that kind of statement? Like, we look back on the things we were told to cut back on in the past and can see the flawed arguments being made against them. Books, whether fiction or non-fiction, definitely broaden people's worldview and improve their vocabulary. Movies and TV do the same and teach folks visual literacy and cinematic language. And lately, being attached to a device will often lead to learning new things, meeting new people, and probably having a laugh or two. All these should be consumed in moderation though, but up until recently you probably only had the choice to engage in either one or two of these things at any given time, and there was going to be a limited amount of technology-based content you could consume. If you finished your movie, well that's all that's playing for the next month. You want another episode of your favorite TV show? Gotta wait till the next season. Have you done that book? Well, go to the library. There was a time and place to engage in your content of choice. Well, mostly. But now that we can hop online any place at any time and always be fed something new, we should probably be thinking a little more critically about how that might affect our brains. Plenty of studies have been done considering this topic, although there doesn't seem to be a consensus on exactly what happens. Most studies end up coming with some sort of negative correlation between memories and big doses of technology, but no conclusive causation seems to exist. That doesn't mean that we can't take a look at how people are interacting with tech and draw some minor conclusions though. Of course, because we're always online, we're paying attention attention less often and usually not focusing on one thing at a time. Multitasking is huge, with folks unlocking the ability to have a hundred tabs open at any given time. Dividing your attention between so many things, often hopping from topic to topic, can mean that you simply aren't absorbing information as you hypothetically could be. That alone can account for some people's declining ability to store memories. Add in the influx of tech into young people's lives and you can see a major shift in the way people use their brains. With tablets, gaming consoles, and other assorted devices being mainstays in people's lives from 
childhood onward, the way folks tend to think might change. And while memory might decline a little bit, it also seems that these new technologies improve folks' problem-solving skills, fluid intelligence, and multitasking abilities. These long-term implications are foggy at best, and I'm sure we will see more studies in the coming years. The sheer volume of information people are processing every day is mind-boggling. It's hard to imagine another time in history when the average individual could access so much info about so many topics in such a short period of time. This could mean that more people will be well informed about a variety of topics, but it can also mean that people decide to only accept certain types of information, leaving things that don't fit the mold out. There's an idea that the brain is like a glass of water. The more you pour in, the fuller it gets, but once it's reached its maximum capacity, the excess flows out. Ideas can be compared to this water, with certain information simply exiting the cup when new stuff comes in. So even as we learn new things at an unprecedented rate, previously acquired knowledge might disappear. The human brain is endlessly fascinating, and it's unlikely that we'll ever completely understand it. But as we move forward in the age of information, we're probably going to discover new things about it, for better or for worse. So what do you think? Does the overabundance of technology and digital information mean that we are endless banks of knowledge? Or does modern technology reduce our ability to properly process what we're learning? What do you think will happen over the next decade? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more fantastic ones from who is the strongest elder god? Kankan Mahadi says, Nodens was my persona in the second installment of Shin Megami Tensei's Persona series. In Persona 2, Nodens looks like a white iron maiden, the medieval torture device, not the band, with three eyes. Nihilithotep and a lot of other eldritch and Lovecraftian creatures were in that game too. I have always loved the way that Shin Megami Tensei interprets mythological creatures and deities. Lots of great art throughout the series. Anubis, God of the Dead, says Azathoth obliterates the entire Lovecraft and the universe easily. I mean, he's not an elder god, technically, and even though he is like the most powerful, he's constantly dreaming everything else, but he's asleep. He's the idiot god, so how can he destroy anything if he doesn't know that he's doing it? Mimi Rad Laszlo says the strongest god is obviously Shaggy. Ultra Instinct, Scoob. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.